got excited uh, on the uh, tour that I took uh, this day that, that you'll see some videos from. Uh, and I'll tell you about that in a moment. I, it's like I suddenly, whoa, I got excited. Uh, Sacre Coeur, I did have that spelled wrong. I fixed that. And yesterday I mentioned Poitiers. Well, if you don't speak any French, you might have no idea. How would you write that Poitiers? Anyway, just mentioning that. Now, the, the, the train trip from Paris, really almost the whole way across France for me, it was on that high-speed train. Uh, but from Paris all the way down to the Spanish border was uh, was not very. Uh, we did not go through land that was very appealing to my eye. Uh, but after we got south and, and and after we got south of Bordeaux, the land was almost distressingly sterile looking. It, it, it was it was sand, sandy soil with pine trees. I think that were harvested. Uh, Periodically, maybe when they were 30, 40 years old, I guess that's what it was. I, and I don't know what for, maybe paperwood? I, I wasn't sure, but it made for a landscape which was just not very appealing, not too much to see. And so my video camera, I hadn't, didn't even turn it on. My daughter didn't take very many pictures, Erica. Uh, but then uh, we finally saw some mountains. We began to approach Spain. And I want to say that they were the Pyrenees, but the Pyrenees, I, I think that the Pyrenees are more specific, uh, a little bit further to the west than what we saw. But that perked us both up. I was uh, surprised and pleased to know that my daughter uh, responded a, a little the same way that I always do to mountains. I even suggested that I may teach a course, uh, a, a mini course, about mountains. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, it looked better. And uh, it left me thinking, actually, that maybe a way to uh, enter uh, Europe, if you were going to do a somewhat similar tour of Spain at least, would be Toulouse. I've never been to Toulouse, France, uh, France but uh, that might be the place to fly to Paris, Toulouse, direct, and then start your land travel at Toulouse. I don't know. But we crossed the border at Yehun, Yehun Spain, near Andai, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Andai in France, right at the border crossing. And it was beginning to get a little bit more interesting. I saw one uh, woman in the train reading a magazine about surfing. And, you know, being an American, I thought, whoa, does she travel to California? Uh, but then, when I caught sight of the ocean, right there in that, in that part of the Atlantic, that's in here, when I caught sight of the ocean and I saw the surf, I understood. That must be a, a major surfing area. I, I had not studied this in advance. But anyway, leaving Irun, I suddenly spotted a bis. At first I thought it was one bis, and then I realized that's two bises. It was across the water, it was up on a mountainside. A normal person would never see it, I suppose, but I spotted it right away. Uh, by the way, you, I saw this perfectly, practically perfectly uh, uh, level contour feature on the side of the mountain. And I perked right up. I said to Eric, that's abyss over there. And you know, she's like, what, what? Well, abyss is, I don't know if you can see that right now, but that's going to be part of this course. I'm going to have a lot to say about abysses. What they are is they're irrigation channels or water channels. That, that, get, that don't let the water fall from a spring or a glacier or a mountainside, but rather make the water go sideways on the mountain. And uh, uh, in Switzerland, we're going to walk along one in this course uh, later on. Well, uh, there are sometimes, uh, this is French Swiss, one of them is German Swiss. Lavadas, that's probably what that would be called, what I saw, Lavada. That's what it's called in Portuguese. A Vala is Tyrolean. Asequias in Peru, that's the first place I ever saw business. Wasserleitungen uh, in Germany. Although Germany doesn't have that same need. Uh, I'll, I'll, I don't want to teach you all about this now, but I saw one. <laughs> and I got the camera out really too late. And if you start to look at the video that comes after this, in the upper right hand corner, you almost have to use your imagination. But you, where it goes across a, an open patch twice, you can see that little line going. Well, I saw it. And I have a little bit on the camera. 
And I said to myself, you know, when I get home, I'm going to look that up and I'm going to see. And sure enough, if you go to Wikimapia, Wikimapia, and type in uh, Irun, Spain, or Onday, France, and then zoom in, uh, and uh, you'll find the Fuerte, Fuerte de Guadalupe. I had no idea what it was, but I could see that the bis was the taking uh, was the water supply for something. I thought it was a monastery, maybe, because I had seen something similar to that and had a similar experience in Ouro Preto, Brazil, when I was there visiting my daughter. Uh, going along the road, I looked on the mountainside, and there I saw a bis. Well, that was the water supply for a, a, a monastery perched up high. Well, anyway, um, I recommend that. It's, if you've never used Wikipedia anyway, you have to learn to zoom and you have to train yourself a little bit, but you can go right down there and look and you'll see that there's one bis uh, and then a, a, another one above it and the two actually run together and they eventually go over to the fort. Well, you're also going to begin to see in my videos that this is going to be about details. This is details of Frank's Tour du Rôle. Not big wide scenery, but details. And I don't have very many videos yet because really I was sort of just waking up from my lethargy from having gone all across that land, which was not so interesting. Our destination that day from Paris early in the morning was Victoria in Spain. And I'll, I'll tell you about Victoria tomorrow. All right, see you then, I hope.